On behalf of the Louisiana Center for the Book in the State Library of Louisiana, thank you for joining us for this virtual 2021 Louisiana Book Festival presentation. This program is bilingual children's books, The Book That Jake Borrowed and Que Vola Nola. What's up, Nola? With Abigail Isakoff and Susan Kralovansky. Before graduating with a BA in psychology from Tulane University in New Orleans, Louisiana, Abigail Isakoff began her writing career with a short story in the school's literary journal. She works as a tour guide for NOLA Art Walk Tours. A trip to Costa Rica spawned a lifelong fascination with and love of Latin American culture. Susan Kralovansky's first book, There Was a Tall Texan Who Swallowed a Flea, was released in 2013 from Pelican Publishing. Since then, she has written both fiction and nonfiction books. The book that Jake borrowed, El Libro que Jake tomó prestado, is Kralovansky's 19th picture book and her fifth to illustrate. Kralovansky's passion is getting kids excited about reading and writing. Her other passion is salted almond chocolate bars. Yum. Ladies and gentlemen, Abigail Isakoff and Susan Kralovansky. My name's Susie Kralovansky, and I'm the author of the book that Jake borrowed. This is a bilingual flip book that Pelican did. So I was an elementary librarian. I was a school librarian and um, had been writing books. And my students were terrible about taking care of their library books. They were wonderful, wonderful kids. But not so good about taking care of their library books. And we would do library lessons um, about keep your books away from your pets and keep your books away from little brothers and sisters. And they would always say, yes, Miss Susie, okay, Miss Susie. And then the next week when they brought their books back, I would say, oh my gosh, what happened? So one frustrating, after one frustrating week, on a Sunday night at like midnight, I woke up with this idea to do the book that Jake borrowed. And it follows the rhythm of the house that Jack built. And um, I would get a line and run upstairs and write it down and come back downstairs, think of another line. And I did that all night long. This is the only hmm. book I've ever done in a night. And at, at 10 to five, I laid back down and I had at least the bones of the book. And my alarm went off at five o'clock to get ready for school. But Anyway, then I made a construction paper um, copy of that book. My intention wasn't to submit it. I had other books, but I was just writing this for my kids. And so I made this construction paper um, book for them. And I knew I had a great idea when I'm reading it to my students and everybody, their mouth is just hanging open. when this um, poor little guy has to bring his bank in, book, bring his bank in to pay for his library book, um, his piggy bank. And um, then the kids were so good about taking care of the ownership of taking care of their books. So I thought, okay, I've really got something here. And so luckily then I perfected my sketches and I sent it to Pelican, my publisher, and um, they were interested. And here's another thing. I explained that librarians, not even just the United States, but librarians everywhere teach that lesson of book care the very first week of school. And um, there hadn't been anything in like 19 years, anything new written. So we'd all use that same old book. And so here was something new and fresh. Well. 
so they published it. And then about a year and a half ago, I said, because I was at a bilingual school and I noticed my um, Latino students wanting to ch are checking out the book, but you know, they're, they are checking out the English version and struggling with it. And I thought, oh my gosh, they need, they need their own version. And um, so I wrote to Pelican and I said, hey, what do you think about this? Could we do this in Spanish? And then they came up with this wonderful idea of, okay, what if it's a flip book and it's English and then the kids flip it over and it's Spanish. So it's all there together. I thought that was genius. So um, that's, that's how the book came about. And I'm happy to say that it's a finalist in the Latino Book Awards. We'll find out um, October 15th how we did, but I know I'm in the top three um, because I got an, a finalist award. So that's really exciting. Nice. Um, I wish you guys could ask me questions. Let me think if there's, I, I will share this. So um, a lot of times kids ask me, do you speak Spanish? And, and for my students, I, I believe I, my guess is because I'm dyslexic that I really struggled. I didn't move to Texas until I was in my mid fifties. And then I, I specifically chose, I wanted to work in a bilingual school. But um, it was very hard to, and as an old lady, learn the language. And, but I'm guessing my dyslexia had something to do with it. But, you know, like I could learn my vocabulary words like line up and table and sit down and come here and, you know, so that kind of stuff I got. Um, but when it was time to translate this book, I, uh, there was no way. But a girl that I taught with, um, that it was one of the bilingual teachers. And so I asked Catherine if she would translate this for Pelican, which she did. And I've got a little bit of, I mean, I've got the whole book, but I'll just show a little bit of Catherine reading um, this book. El libro que Jake tomó prestado. Escrito e ilustrado por Susan Holt Kralavansky. Traducido por Catherine Adams. Este es Jake. Este es el libro que Jake tomó prestado. Esta es la jalea que goteó en el libro. Ay, no, que Jake tomó prestado. Esta es la rata que la mió la jalea, guacala, que goteó en el libro. Ay, no, que Jake tomó prestado. This is the fun part about getting to illustrate your own book is when I was illustrating this, then in my basket of books, because in my library, I keep a basket of books by my side that um, are ready for my kids. If they say, oh, what, what, what do you suggest or what's a good book? Okay, so here I put Gaston, which is a Pelican book and um, the Piggy, hmm. I think this is a Piggy Little Witch. One of my friends illustrated that. It's a Pelican book. And Frog and Toad was my first nonfiction book with a different publisher. But down here um, is there, there was a tall Texan was my first book with Pelican. So it was in my, in my thing. So here's, here is another fun thing. When I do school visits and then the kids will notice. So this 12 Cowboys Roping was my second book to do with Pelican. And then, then they'll say, it's your book. He was reading your book. I just think that's really fun. I love it when kids make um, connections. I mean, you know, that's one of their lessons that they're taught is making book to book connections. Um, let me. So, oh, all right. So here's another one. 
So when I was writing this book, again, I was writing it for my students and I happened to be at a, a librarian's meeting and I was sitting with one of my really good friends. And um, so I said, hey, Rachel, read this and tell me what you think. And Rachel said, okay, you have to, you have to make sure that kids understand the rat is a pet, that it's not, they're just not rats randomly running around their house. So I said to my husband, this little rat cage over here, uh, pet cage. And I said to my husband, when you're at work tomorrow, I want you to solder me. And I described what I wanted for this little rat cage. And so he, he made it. I just thought that was very fun. Oh, let me think if the, oh, okay. I have a standard poodle. So I had to put my, my dog in there too. Um, and her name is Maddie. I don't know if you can see that down there at the bottom. But that's what it is. It says on her dog dish. My son's name is Jake. So I thought, oh, that's perfect. Jake's in the book. We have a cat named um, Lynx. Actually, we have two cats. But so the cat, the dog, every everybody's in the book. And wait, now let me get to, um, there's the bank that, and even when I read this to seventh graders, then I get to the part of the bank, they are, you know, just sitting there honestly with their mouth hanging open. Okay, so then, so in our, we always had a book hospital that I would do this lesson and show the kids my um, books that now have to be fixed. And then the kids would say, in the old days, I had way long hair, but they'd say, that's you, isn't it? <laughs> I would say, yeah, yeah, it is. But again, I got to use, so this is my book. Here are a couple Pelican books. And back here, The Salamander is another one of my nonfiction. Um, I'm, here's a, the illustration from this, 12 Cowboys Roping. This is my sisters and I, my version of what I think my sisters and I look like. Um, so anyway, and then that's my version of what I think a librarian normally looks like. Happy, happy, loving their job, kids loving their books. All right. So, and me loving my job writing books for kids. Abby, do you have any other questions you can think of? Uh, so what was your first book? My very first book with Pelican was this one. There was a tall person. <laughs> Cute. And, and again, I got the idea from this from my students because we always did, there was an old lady and we and they happened to be in there for a longer time. And I said, hey, you guys, let's, let's write our story. And they wanted to do a Martian. And so there was an old Martian and and the guy ends up eating his space food, his spaceship, his, you know, his space suit. And we just think we're hilarious. We have a wonderful time. I get out the whiteboard, we write it all down and uh, we're practicing rhyming, all of that. Well, as they're leaving, a little boy named Bryce says, hey, Miss Susie, if you did a, there's somebody eating somebody, what, what would, or eating something, what would you do? And I said, because we had just moved to Texas and I said, oh, Bryce, Mine would be a cowboy. I love living in Texas. And so um, that night, well, and actually I have to give, I have to give credit to this. So my friend, Deb Kader is a Pelican illustrator. And Deb happened to say to me, man, if you come up with an idea, um, I will do some illustrations and send it in. And so came up with this idea, she did sketches and, they accepted it. So that's really how I got started with Pelican. But in this, being a librarian and we study Texas history, even the littlest kids, my idea was that, that he was going to eat all the Texas symbols. But while working on my rhyme scheme, and except for a flea is not a Texas symbol, but we just have a lot of them. But working on my rhyme scheme and revising, revising, and I had him eat a rattlesnake. And not until it went into print did I remember, oh, a rattlesnake is not a Texas symbol. But 
that Robert and I were talking earlier about making, uh, our, you know, that silver lining. So that's how I got the idea for this book. And I wrote and said, we pre-K through, um, pre-K through second start the year out with learning about Texas and Texas symbols. And so then this one is a counting book for little kids. And it again, follows the rhythm of um, 12 days of Christmas. So it can be a Christmas book. And then informational facts at the back. So um, I wrote and said, oh, we need this. And, and they went along with it. So lucky there. we first started dating Ramiro, I was always like surprised at how many similarities he would be always pointing out about how Cuba and New Orleans are so similar. We went to Cuba together in, in late 2018. And I guess uh, shortly after that is when I started writing the book, when I got the idea for the book. combined with a real incident where my mother, she lives here now. She moved to New Orleans at the end of 2019, but she used to visit a lot. And on one of her visits, when she got back to Pennsylvania, she found that there was a live, an old lizard in her suitcase that had hitched a ride from New Orleans. Actually, sometimes that happens to me that I am out there and, and I said, is my life real right now? Actually, I get like, this is actually Cuba that time went by and you know, what was going on? <laughs> it's like that would be cool if the lizard came from Cuba to New Orleans and he didn't know that he was in a different city because they're so similar. It's more important now than ever for kids to recognize that we're part of a global community and just see the similarities rather than the differences. And also learning another language early on, like young is, super important, I think. I mean, I always wish that I had started studying Spanish earlier. Maybe I could talk to your dad more easily <laughs> that way. Cuba, when I came here, it surprised me that everybody said hello on the street. Everybody tried to help me out. And I felt so welcome that, that I said, damn, it feels like home to me. The only difference at, at that time was the language, of course. But do, do you feel the the energy, the the flavor? The flavor is right here. <laughs> okay, this is my book. It's called Cabola Nola. What's up, Nola? Cabola is like Cuban slang for what's up. Volar is to fly. So what's flying, I guess, is the root of that. Um, I came up with the idea for my book because, uh, well, the illustrator, uh, I was close with him. And for years, he would tell me how much Havana, or how he's from Havana, Cuba, right? So he loves New Orleans and he would just always say how much everything in New Orleans reminded him of Havana because when he first came to the U.S., he went to Miami first, which is, you know, where most Cubans or a lot of Cubans end up when they immigrate here and he hated it and didn't feel at home there at all. But then when he came here, he felt like he had found a second home and just kept seeing all the parallels. So the other inspiration for this book is, uh, uh, you had asked before where I'm from, Susie, and I said I'm from Pennsylvania. So um, 
my mother actually moved down here at the end of 2019 to be closer to the majority of her grandkids. Uh, so before that though, she would come down to visit a lot. And on one of those visits, she came, went back to Pennsylvania and opened up her suitcase and there was a live green anole lizard just sitting there oh. in the suitcase. So she ended up taking it to like a nature preserve somewhere locally and outside of Philly because obviously an anole couldn't live outside in the four seasons of Pennsylvania. But uh, that just sort of inspired me and it, it clicked in my head one day. I think I was in the shower and I was like, what if a lizard came from Havana instead of from uh, here and thought that it was the same city because they're yeah. so similar. So uh -huh. that, that was the inspiration. And when I first, uh, when I submitted the story, I had actually written it out with just all in English, but with pieces of Spanish, like Cuban slang, sort of Spanglish, I guess I wrote it in. Um, I do speak Spanish. I don't know if I would call myself fluent, but I, I, I understand most of what I hear and uh -huh. I can get along. <laughs> I know that I should give myself more credit, but um, yeah, I had written it just with like the Cuban slang. And then I wrote in the back, like a glossary for the vocabulary. But then when Pelican accepted it, they said, we want you to write it in English and Spanish every page, like separate the story in two paragraphs on every page. So for that, because like I said, I, not exactly fluent. I did the translation myself. Um, and then I turned to, strangely enough, I, I have a very colorful and interesting family background. Um, I am a sperm donor baby, actually, an anonymous donor baby from the 80s. And I found my donor in 2017 through 23andMe. And through that, I have discovered like uh, I now have like 10 siblings about, <laughs> including the wow. ones that raised and then some other donor babies popped up. And one of the donor babies who popped up in 20, it was summer of 2019, happened to be a sister who, whose mother's Cuban. Oh. So I, in all of this, I actually have a half Cuban sister. So I turned to her because I've, I've been very lucky. Like I've wanted a relationship with the donor family and stuff uh, just because I've been curious my whole life about exactly where I came from and everything. So I've been lucky that they've all wanted relationships too, for the most part. And uh, my half Cuban sister is the one who polished my grammar and made sure everything made yep. sense in the Spanish uh, part. So in the in the dedication, I, I dedicated it to my kids, but also special thanks to dear sister, Jessica. So that's, oh. my, that's my sister. Thank you for watching this presentation of the virtual 2021 Louisiana Book Festival. Please visit our official bookseller, Cavalier House Books, and receive 20% off all featured festival titles through the end of the year. A special thank you to our festival sponsors. The Louisiana Book Festival will return on October 29th, 2022.